Okay, hi everyone, and thanks for joining today. So my name is Ali Richtan from Guazio, and I'm gonna talk about Feature Store. I'm gonna start with the uh, challenge of uh, managing data in the machine learning pipeline, and then we'll talk about uh, Feature Store and how the Feature Store can help with that challenge, what Feature Store is all about, what are the benefits, and then we'll deep dive into a demo. So when we build a machine learning pipeline, it basically comprises of a couple of steps. So we have the data that's coming in from uh, databases like uh, OLTP databases, transactional databases. You may have some ETL that takes the data, and then you may have some data that is coming from streaming engine or APIs. And then a data scientist basically takes that raw data and start uh, developing features out of it. So you need to explore the data, develop some features, and eventually start training a model, develop all kinds of models that fits to those you know, features, and at the end of the day, deploy that model in production, in the serving layer. And then once the model is being deployed, you also need to monitor the model, make sure that the data that is going to the model is the right set of data, to monitor whether there is a drift within the data, and so on and so forth. So when you think about this uh, uh, pipeline, and you think about the challenges in order to create those pipelines, it basically, uh, uh, you can see that, you know, most of the complexities arise from the data. So it all, it all has to do with the data itself, because you need to get the data from different sources, then the data scientist needs to do something with the data, create this raw data into features that, are, uh, that can be fit in a model, and then once you have the model, you still need to make sure that the data that goes to the model, uh, the feature vector in production is the right set of data. You need to monitor that. So at the end of the day, everything has to do with the data. And you can see that you know, most of the challenges is basically around handling the data within this machine learning uh, pipeline. Now, on top of that, if you think about the, the typical you know, scenarios or the typical flow, uh, you, you basically have the data scientists in the middle. So the data scientists needs to get the data. Sometimes they need the data engineers in order to help them to you know, get the data from data lakes, all kinds of uh, data sources. Then they create the model, they play around the feature with the features, they create features, they train the model, and then once the model is ready, now they need to take it to production. Now, how do you do that? How do you take this piece of code that is actually working in the lab and migrate it into production? In many cases, that requires some migration of data and migration of pipeline. So the data scientist needs to go back to the data engineers in order to rewrite the code in a way that the code is suitable for production. Because in production, you may have different uh, engines. You may have you know, streaming engines. You may need to deal with live feeds that are coming in from a streaming engine like Kafka, or you may need to take the data from OLTP databases and so on and so forth. So the source of the data is different. The way you handle the data may be different because now you need to create some kind of an online transformation that goes into an online database so your machine learning model can actually use that. So there is an entire process that you need to migrate from research to production, and there are lots of back and forth between the data scientists and the data engineers in order to do that. And then you have the MLOps engineer that is basically responsible to set up the entire environment, to make sure that you have the right processes in order to take that you know, piece of code and run it in a scalable cluster, uh, to have all the libraries in place, to have you know, monitoring set up so you can monitor the model, to identify drift, to analyze the data, to send notification, maybe to re-trigger the entire training process again and again. So again, there are lots of back and forth between the data scientists and the data engineers and the envelopes in order to actually create such pipeline and to move those data pipelines and the models all the way from research to production. And this is why a feature store comes to the rescue, if you, if you will. As you can see, the feature store is actually at the heart of this machine learning pipeline. Feature store provides you the ability to create and manage all kinds of features in a very easy way. And it really changed the paradigm of creating machine learning pipeline because it changed the entire process and, and the, the entire way that uh, we think about machine learning pipeline. 
With a feature store, you have this single pane of glass where you can create features, manage features, reuse features, and basically have all the information that you need in order to see if uh, a feature that you may need is already available and to see what are the links between the features and the models that already exist and things along those lines. But the beauty of it is that the fit in a feature store, you actually define the logic once. And once you define those logic of the feature engineering, you don't need to re-implement the data again. You don't need to re-implement the code that gets from development to production. The same set of logic can be used for training and for serving and there's no you know, back and forth whatsoever between the data scientists and the data engineers. And the, the thing is that you basically empower the data scientists with a very simple APIs to create things like you know, sliding windows, aggregation, all kinds of transformation, filter the data, join the data, and so on and so forth. So again, with using a very kind of you know, abstract API, so you simplify this uh, process of creating features and managing features. And, and the nice thing about it is that this type of uh, uh, logic is basically, mean, basically means that those features are ready for production from day one. So the same set of logic is good for training, it's good for serving, it's good for you know, monitoring. So the monitoring is, is another angle, because if you think about it, you have the data, the feature vector that goes to the model monitoring, but then in the feature store, you also trained the model and you have all the analysis about you know, the features and you can actually compare between the features that were trained in the feature store and the features that are actually being sent in the production serving layer. And if there is a gap, you can identify that there is a data drift based on you know, those two data sets. The other thing that it provides you, it provides you a way to avoid this uh, train serve skew. Because again, you're using the same logic for training and serving. You don't need to rewrite the code. You don't need to re-implement anything. It means that you don't have this issue of train serve skew because it's the same logic. So bottom line, you're, you're getting a mechanism here that allows you to uh, use the same logic for your training and serving without migrating the data again, minimizing the back and forth between the data scientists, the data engineers, and the MLOps engineer. And by doing that, you're getting a much you know, faster process from development to production, production and lots of other benefits, like the fact that you have a catalog of features. You can share features, you can reuse features. So as a data scientist, when you start your project, you don't need to start from scratch, right? You can go to this catalog, you can easily identify if there are features that already exist that you can reuse, and, and that basically can you know, save a lot of time especially when it comes to large organizations that have lots of projects, lots of data scientists, you can reuse those features, you can go to that catalog, and you can basically speed up your uh, development process you know, big time. Now, if you uh, look at the tech giants, they already kind of you know, figure it out. So they created their own machine learning platform with a feature store because they have the resources and they have the the manpower and, and the money to put on that you know, type of solution. So Uber came up with this uh, Michael, Michelangelo uh, platform. Netflix has their own solution. Twitter has their own solution, and so on and so forth. And, and we believe in Iguazio that uh, those type of solutions should be available across the, any enterprise. So it's not just for the tech giants, but any enterprise can actually benefit from having a feature store and manage, manage those you know, features in, in a much easier way as, as it is today. So if you think about you know, in a very high level what Feature Store is all about and what are the features that Feature Store brings in, then the Feature Store is, is first and foremost a single pane of glass that you can uh, view all of your features. You have a catalog of features. You can share features, reuse features, and easily uh, keep uh, all kinds of metadata about those features. So you can see which features are being you know, used mostly, which features are linked to specific models, and so on and so forth. So again, as a data scientist, you don't need to start from scratch. You can go to that catalog and easily identify if there are some features that you need or you can leverage. The other aspect of it, which is even more powerful, is the fact that a feature store is really all about being a data transformation service. So you can actually empower the data scientists 
to create all kinds of things that are more you know, complex data engineering stuff. So sliding window aggregations, filtered data with different data so sets, all kinds of transformation, all those type of things can be done using this API, using this SDK, without the overhead of data engineers, with very, very minimal uh, uh, overhead of uh, feature engineering. And, and that's a pretty big thing. And once you do that and you define that logic, and the data is going to uh, be uh, saved in the uh, offline feature store and also in the online feature store, it basically means that those type of features are ready for operational use from day one. And that's, uh, that's a pretty big thing for feature store. So with that, let me go to, uh, to see, to show you how that actually works. So I'm going to show you a demo of a feature store, of this, you know, equals your feature store. And with this uh, demo, I'm going to show you how uh, we can take a couple of data sets. Uh, in this case, those are three data frames and create feature sets out of it and consume those feature set. Now, it was a feature store basically uh, use uh, three engines. So we can work with Spunk, we can work with uh, Pandas data frames, and we can also work with an engine that is called the story, which is a stream processing engine that uh, basically provides a, a way to uh, create a complex, you know, real-time workflow in a very efficient way. So you can actually create a graph that comprises of different steps and do all kinds of real-time transformation within that graph. So in this demo, I'm gonna show you how we can actually leverage that engine for the sake of the, this demo. So the first thing that we wanna do is to uh, create a, a project. So our project is stocks-demo. Everything here is in the context of the project. And now we're going to create a couple of data frames. So we have quotes, we have trades, and we have stocks data frame. So the quotes is basically based on time, ticker, bid, and ask. <clears throat> the trade is, has a time, ticker, price, and quantity. And the stocks is some kind of a lookup table with the ticker name and uh, the name of the exchange. Now, in order to uh, run our feature store, you need to run a couple of uh, imports. So the feature store is basically a library within uh, uh, an open source that is called MLRun that is part of the solution. So we're running a couple of imports. And then in order to create a very basic uh, feature set, all I need to do is to run this uh, feature set command, give it a name, the name is talks, and the entities. Now, the entity is basically the key. I'm going to use that to do the, the joins with the other uh, feature set. And now, once I uh, create this feature set, I can actually ingest the data into that feature set. So I'm gonna ingest this you know, stocks data frame into this feature set that is called stocks set. So that's a very, very you know, basic uh, feature set. Under the hood, that's gonna run a process of basically save the data in both the offline feature store and also the online feature store. And uh, the online feature store uh, under the hood is basically based on very, very fast key value. And that means that the data is available for you know, online application with very you know, low latency uh, access. And then the offline feature store is usually based on parquet file for you know, training and all kinds of uh, analytic type of you know, processing. So this is how I can actually create a very basic feature set. But now let's say that I want to create more you know, advanced feature set. I want to take the the quotes data frame and basically create all kinds of transformations you know out of it so i'm going to create this a uh, new feature set called stocks quotes give it an entity again the, the the ticker is our entity now i want to create a graph a real-time graph that basically comprises of you know a couple of steps so the first thing that i want to do is to create a, a custom code so i want to create some kind of a class here called my map and do something like you know, adding another column, in this case called multi, that is based on an event called bid, multiply that by something. So this is a custom code that I want to add into my uh, graph. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna use this uh, story library, which again, it's a stream processing library to do all kinds of more complex uh, uh, transformation. And in order to uh, create that graph, I need to specify the uh, feature set name, dot graph dot two, and this is how I can actually create steps within the graph. So the first step is to add this my map, this custom code that I just uh, created, 
with some value, multiply that by you know, three, and then I'm going to add a few more steps. So I can use all kinds of you know, built-in libraries. So for example, I want to create another column that is called extra and run this uh, you know, lambda function, lead multiplied by you know, 77, for example. So I can use this extend you know, uh, command here. Now, I, I may want to filter the data. So I can use the filter option here in order to fill all the bits that are greater than you know, 51. And then uh, the other step that I want to do is to do some validation. So I want to make sure that you know, we, the, the minimum bits are you know, 52, for example. And uh, if that's not the case, then I want to notify or you know, send some notification. So we can use this you know, feature set validator in order to do that. And then uh, the other step that I want to do, I want to create a sliding window of a you know, couple of columns here. So uh, I want to create uh, aggregations for the ask and the bid columns that are based on the sum and the max formula for one hour and five hours on a sliding windows of you know, 10 minutes. So in order to do that, I just need to uh, uh, specify or set the, the feature set name, dot add aggregation, and that's going to do the trick here. It's going to create a column that is basically comprises of the name of this you know, alias, ask one or ask you know, five, then concatenate with the, the formula and the, the time window. And eventually, once I run it, I'm going to see this graph that comprises of this you know, first step, the my map, this you know, custom class, then the extend, filter, validator, and at the end, we can see the uh, aggregation. So now I have a graph. I know that this is my transformation. And before I run a full ingestion, I actually want to test it and see if the data makes sense. So in order to simulate this uh, process, I can run this command, infer metadata. I'm going to change it, by the way, to uh, preview. Uh, give the uh, feature set name, the, the data frames, the entity column, and the timestamp. And now I can see the actual data that is going to be ingested into the feature set. So uh, in our case, we can see the ticker name, all those aggregations that are part of the graph, you know, the uh, one hour and five hours aggregation for the asks and the bid, the timestamp, the bid command, the ask, and those two new columns that it just created within the graph, the multi and the extra. Now, life is good. I, I'm happy with the data. And now I want to ingest the data into the feature set. So again, all I need to do is to run this ingest command, give the uh, data frame name and the data frame and the quotes, uh, ingest it into the uh, feature set, which is the quotes uh, underscore set. And that's it. Now the data is going to be uh, kept in the uh, offline feature store and the online feature store once I run this you know, ingest command. Now, if I go to the uh, user interface and we have this you know user interface where you can see uh, all of your projects and within the project you can see lots of information about the different elements within the project and and one of the section is the feature store so in my project in this uh, stocks uh, demo project i can see those two uh, feature sets the stocks and the stock quotes uh, with some you know information the entity and the targets and when i drill down uh, from that, you know, stocks uh, quotes uh, feature set, I get to see lots of uh, metadata uh, for that feature set. So, you know, the version, when it was last update, uh, the, tick, the entity, which is the ticker name, the URI, and all that kind of stuff, including the actual command in order to consume this uh, feature set. Then I get to see the entire list of uh, features. Uh, so you can see the tickers, the entity, and all those aggregations. And, and the, uh, the columns that we've created, and also the transformation itself. So I can view the graph. This is the graph that we've seen uh, earlier in, in Jupyter with all those you know, steps. And if I go to some of those steps here, I can actually see you know, the code. So uh, you can basically uh, uh, easily identify or easily view this you know, transformation graph. Uh, we have preview of the data. So you get to see uh, some sample of data. Uh, you may have some statistics. So um, as a built-in component, we are actually running all kinds of you know, statistics on the feature set. So it's all here in the uh, user interface, and you can view all those, that information. 
And in addition for of you know viewing the data, we can uh, we're also about to add more uh, options to create features and feature vectors from the user interface. So it's not just you know read only. So now we have those you know feature sets, and the next step is basically to consume them for both you know training and for uh, inference. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to create a, a feature vector for my uh, training and uh, online uh, application. And in this case, I'm going to join three tables, three uh, feature sets, the, the stocks, the, the quotes, and the trades, using this time travel uh, join. Because uh, within the uh, trades and within the quotes data frames, uh, we basically have a timestamp, but the timestamp is not exactly the same, right? So you want to join it based on a time travel uh, type of join. So in order to do that, I just need to list down the set of features, and I can create a feature vector that basically comprises of different uh, features coming across from you know, various uh, feature sets. So we have a list of features here, and now we create this feature vector and uh, object. So the feature vector, uh, we give it a name, the list of the features, description, and we can save it as an object within our project. Once we have the feature vector, we can basically fetch the data using get offline features. I give it you know, the feature vector name. The entity rows are actually the, uh, the data frames, in this case, the trades that we're going to join this feature vector. So the trades are like you know, feeds that are coming in uh, in an online manner. And I'm going to join them with the feature vector that I just uh, set. The entity timestamp is this, you know, timestamp field that we're going to do the uh, the time travel uh, join. So this is the feature set. Uh, this is the features that we're getting once we are running the get offline features. So we can see the uh, the ticker name, the full name, the exchange, which is taken from the stocks uh, feature set, and then all those aggregations and the columns that we just got uh, out from those, you know, three feature sets. So now we have a data frame. We can use that data frame in order to run our training. Now, we can leverage that feature vector, basically, not just for training, but we can do uh, online serving as well. And in order to do that, we create this uh, service. Uh, all we need to do is to run this get online feature service, give it the uh, feature vector name. We can actually uh, view the, the statistics. So that's also you know, part of the kind of you know, built-in mechanism that we have. And in order to fetch the, the features, all I need to do is basically to call this service.get with the uh, ticker name. This is our key. And now we are getting the aggregations and the columns in an online manner from this very, very fast you know, key value database. So if you have a serving you know, function, a, a model that is running, uh, in order to fetch or enrich the feature vector, uh, all you need to do is basically to call this get command and that's going to do the tweak to, for you in an online manner. So the, the beauty of it is that uh, we didn't need to write anything in order to store the data in both the, the offline database and the online database. You just need to use the same feature vector, and that's kind of you know, available for both you know, training and for serving. If we go to the user interface again, uh, you can actually see those you know, feature vector. So this is the, the vector that we just created uh, with all the, the information about the feature vector. Uh, you, we can see the requested features and the definition of the features, basically, and then uh, the returned features themselves. Because uh, you may want to request you know, the, the full set of features from a specific feature set. And at the end of the day, it generates the, the actual you know, features here. So you have all those you know, information captured in the, uh, the user interface as well. So what I showed you right now is some, it's kind of you know, a, a basic flow where we take a couple of data frames and we create feature set, we do a couple of transformation, and then we can consume that uh, data for both you know, training and for uh, serving. Now, if you want to look at more advanced type of uh, um, you know, feature store capabilities, uh, I really encourage you to go to the uh, mlrun.org uh, page. We have lots of information here in about you know, mlrun in general and also about the feature store. And if you drill down, you can see uh, to the feature store section, you can actually see the, the feature store 
example that I just showed you, including the end-to-end uh, -end, uh, demo, which is more uh, comprehensive one. So if we go kind of you know, real quick on this one, this is basically uh, a scenario where we take uh, data from three dif different uh, data sources. Uh, it's basically based on a healthcare you know, scenario where we take data from healthcare systems, patient records, real-time sensors. So in this case, uh, we're not just using data frame, we're using uh, pocket files, and we're also ingesting data in real time. So if you're interested to see how you know, that works, just go to this notebook number one, the ingest data source. And here you can, you know, you get to see more, you know, complex uh, examples of how we can actually work with uh, real-time data that flows into uh, the feature set. So if you drill down here, you can actually see uh, the code of uh, creating the feature set. And in this case, the feature set that works with, you know, real-time mechanism basically works with a serverless function that can listen to all kinds of engine. So you can link that uh, serverless function to uh, Kafka or Kinesis, or even have some you know, HTTP endpoint uh, as the, the endpoint for ingesting the data to that feature set. And there is some example of how you can do that. So the way to ingest data to the real-time uh, feature set uh, is by using this deploy ingestion service. You give it you know, the source, and then uh, and basically under the hood, that's going to uh, create a serverless function that listen to either you know, Kafka or whatever you set it up, and then uh, read the, the events and run the transformation graph that I showed you earlier. But this time, it can do that you know, in, in real time. Now, if you go to the uh, training uh, notebook, the second notebook, this is where you can actually see an example of how we can you know, train a model using feature store. So in this case, it's a, a scikit-learn you know, classifier that you pass this you know, feature vector that we created in the previous uh, step as an input to that you know, uh, training job. So this is a nice example of how you can incorporate it uh, within training. And once we have a model, we created the model. Now, how do I you know, uh, consume that in a serving you know, function? So if you go to the notebook number three here, you can actually see how we use that uh, feature set uh, and the feature vector basically uh, in the uh, serving function using the get online feature service. And this is how we can actually run the model with that you know, feature uh, vector. So this is a more kind of you know, comprehensive one with you know, real time feature sets uh, example. Uh, and you can see the full monty of ingesting the data into the feature store creating a training model based on you know, that feature vector and eventually deploy a model that can uh, work with the feature store as well. Okay, so, um, so before I wrap up, just uh, real quick, uh, we are actually uh, started a hackathon recently that is called MLOps for Good. Uh, I really encourage you to uh, go to iguazi.com hackathon, take a look at it. It's a, it's a wonderful event. Basically, it's a hackathon about envelopes. So unlike uh, lots of you know, data science hackathon where the focus is around building the best you know, machine learning model and the algorithm, all that kind of stuff, this one is around the operational aspect. So what we're expecting from you know, the participants here is basically to come up with a machine learning pipeline that can be deployed in operational environments. So, it's mainly around you know, uh, MLOps, uh, that's the focus. And basically the idea is to bring the data science to production for social goods. So there's a very good purpose around that. So again, just go to iguaza.com hackathon. We'll be more than happy to see you over there. So that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it on my end. Let's see if there are any other questions that we, need, we can take. Uh, Baila, any any questions that we want to that we can take on the uh, Q and A side? OK, 
Okay, so seems like there are no questions right now. Uh, so thanks, thanks everyone. Hope you enjoyed the session and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.